In 2020, humankind reaches a tipping point. After years of heightened political tension made worse by shortages of clean air and water, after decades of war in the shadow of the nuclear cloud, conflict and terrorism continue to rise. After centuries of exploiting the Earth's resources, the planet is dying. If the species is to survive, it must reach beyond the stars. Doing that will take a multinational effort on a scale never seen before. And so, the Samsara mission is born. A multinational effort to reach and colonize Mars for the benefit of all humankind. When the first mission ends in catastrophic failure, the strength of the international bond is weakened and threatens to dissolve completely. Now humanity faces a stark choice. Make the leap to the stars or die in the polluted mud of our home planet. The choice is ours. Where is she? The lab. You left her there alone? She's fine. Bianca's doing the blood work. She likes Bianca. Yeah. Yeah, she does. Okay, let's go. Cat. Cat. What? What? Doctor wants to talk to us. No! Without Amelia. No! Cat, we need to hear what he has to say. I'm sorry. You said it was gone. What I said was that it was in remission. We always knew that there was a chance. You said it was gone. It's never that simple. Explain it then, huh? Feel free to use short words. The tumors have spread. The tumors? As in more than one? What are our options? Chemo, surgery, radiation, what? I'm afraid. None of the above. I'm going to be in the lab with Amelia. All available personnel to the ER. Oh. 
Catherine's been under a lot of pressure. The mission coming up. I can imagine. And now this, it must be very frustrating to come so close and then have to step aside and to hand over your place in history to someone else. She's not stepping aside. We all agree. Catherine's going to Mars. How long? There's no way of telling, you know. In, in cases like this... Amelia! Her name is Amelia! So this is where the party is. Daddy! We're all done here. But you may want to swing by the cafeteria to get some juice, okay? Because I took a lot of blood. Mmm, juice sounds good. Kraz Raz. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Pickle juice and strained sauerkraut. Sound good? You know, I want to go home. I'm tired. Take back, right? Hmm? Oh, yeah! Oh, you <laughs> Bye, Bianca. Before I met you, the only constellation I could name was the Big Dipper. Everybody starts with the Big Dipper in Orion. Amelia asked me for a telescope for Christmas so she could see you on Mars. I'm thinking maybe you should get her for a birthday instead. Doctor said. Doctor said that we should appreciate the time we have with her, whether it's three weeks or three years. Three years? He said three years? He was that specific? He said three years? It could be longer. I wouldn't be back for three years. It could be longer, he said. Amelia's strong. She's, she's a fighter. She's like you. Like me. I mean, what kind of mother abandons her dying child? You are the greatest mother a little girl could ask for. And the greatest wife. You don't just belong to us. What you're doing, it's gonna make the world a better place. Not just for me and you and Amelia, but for everyone. If there's even a mission. You don't think the Chinese will pull out? No, but the guy who shot the president, he was American. It's not on the news. Yeah, they're trying to embargo it. The, the PRC intelligence agents tracked him down to Hong Kong and took him into custody this morning. He claims he's part of a group that doesn't want humanity to leave Earth. <laughs> God want a man to fly out of giving them wings. Exactly. What a mess. It's all a mess. And all we're gonna do is bring our problems with us. Man's greatest export to the universe. My granddad once told me that when he was 15, it was the worst year he's ever lived through. Robert Kennedy was just assassinated, and Martin Luther King. The Milan massacre happened. Russian tanks were rolling into Czechoslovakia. It was just one god-awful thing after another. And there was no reason to believe that 1969 would be any better. And then Apollo 11 made it to the moon. 
And Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, they left their footprints in the moon dust. And my granddad said that when he saw those footprints, he felt like crying because he knew that everything was going to be okay. You need to leave your footprints in the Mars dust so that everyone will know it's going to be okay. That no matter what's happening right now, there's something bigger out there. You need to give people hope. Going to enhance these beautiful cheekbones. You all right, sweetie? I don't feel so good. Don't? Oh. oh. It's okay, baby. It's all right. Oh, thanks. Well, don't cry, sweetheart. Do you need the bathroom? It's just out the door to the right. I'm so sorry. It's, you know, the meds she's on, it's... My son had a bad stomach. Cancer. He had cancer. My baby. <clears throat> you need some roses on your cheeks. Sit. All right, roses coming up. <laughs> Dickles. <laughs> Sissy! <laughs> How are you, my lovely girl? <gasps> oh, my. Safari Nim Gemma. Oh. Did I say it right? Perfectly, my dear. Oh, I'll see you out there. Okay. Constance, can I speak to you for a second? Oh. oh. You look beautiful. Safari. Nimjama? <laughs> it means bon voyage in Swahili. Ah. Well, look at you. Constance gave you roses. <laughs> roses in her cheeks. Constance uh, felt that she was uh, looking a little pale. I threw up in front of Constance. This is before or after she gave you the roses. Before. I'm thirsty. Hey, why don't you guys go grab something from the snack cart? Yeah? Even if the press conference starts on time, you've got about half an hour. You want anything? I know you didn't eat breakfast. What's breakfast? The most important meal of the day. That's right. I'll get you a muffin. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Samsara International Space Team. Jeff Taylor, Toronto Globe and Mail. My question is for Dr. Liu. You have a long history in heterogeneous catalysts and surface science. Uh, you've pioneered work with nanotubes, nanomaterials, and nanostructures. How will your work be integrated into the mission? It is the mission. Without nanotechnology and nanomaterials, there is no Mars colony. Without me, there is no mission. So wait, you mean I can stay home and watch the World Cup? <laughs> Hello, Elvis. Hi, Myra. Nice to see you again. <clears throat> Mira Morgenthau, io9.com. You'll be in charge of communications for the Samsara mission, is that correct? That is the word on the street. So essentially, you'll be wiring Mars. Designing the colony's communication infrastructure, yes. And once I'm done, you'll never be able to say in space, no one can hear you scream. Hiroko Okamura, NHK. Dr. Voss, you've said that you will be conducting studies into the nature of the dark matter principle. 
Yes, and expanding on the groundbreaking work conducted by David Klein. Can you explain to my viewers exactly what dark matter is? Well, if I knew that, Hiroko, I wouldn't have to go to Mars. Amina Labibi, Al Jazeera. My question is for you, Dr. Bira. Yes. Your role on this mission is more observational and less action, is it not? Are you asking me if I'm with the band? <laughs> um, forgive me my little joke. Um, I understand that my function may not seem as important as those of my colleagues. I won't be conducting atmospheric studies like Catherine or doing biomedical research like Luchon. But I'd like to think my work on group dynamics could prove useful in the future. I'll be expanding on the Mars 500 experiments from 2009 to 2011 and on the year-long high seas project of 2015, which focused on crew member cohesion and performance. Mars is a long way away, and the quarters we'll be sharing are rather small. It's not like we can send someone back to Earth for uh, a timeout if they get cranky. Uh, speaking of that, don't you think, given the considerable cost of this mission, that we should be focusing on colonization, not simply exploring? I think you should consider us more as a landing party rather than an invading army. Our goals are no less ambitious. Our commitment is total, but our scope is more focused. We are there to prepare the way. Was the failure of the Mars First Initiative forcing a reevaluation of this mission? Did science fail us? Susan, s'il te plaît. The Mars First disaster was not a failure of science, it was a failure of trust. And you, you trust this mission? I do. We'll be back. <laughs> Are you really going to leave your dying child to go off on this adventure? I'm sorry, you with? Dr. Liu, perhaps you'd like to comment on the allegations that your agency plans to plant the Chinese flag on Mars and claim all the resources for the PRC alone. You know about the Antarctica Treaty of 1959. It prohibits military activities, mineral mining, and detonating nuclear explosions in Antarctica. To date, 71 nations have signed it. The Mars Treaty is fashioned on the very same principles. This is a scientific mission being conducted by an international team for the benefit of all mankind. You mean humankind? Have I answered your question? Yeah, but... Um... Just one thing. As far back as 2015, the International Academy of Astronautics proclaimed that mineral resources found in space are actually game changers. They even went on to recommend us how we can further leverage these resources. Are you familiar with this study? I believe one of the co-editors was your mentor at the Beijing Institute of Technology. What is your question? Just what does Antarctica have that anyone would want? Penguins? But Mars? It'll be an intergalactic gold rush. Going to be hard to stay high-minded. This is what's wrong with capitalism. My parents have come to watch the lunch. My mother is cooking tonight all my favorites. Will you come? You and John and Amelia. to go now, baby.
for you. That's Mars. I was gonna draw Sissy and Elvis and Dr. Lou and Lucy Pascal, but I didn't have the room. That's okay. We could pretend they're visiting the other side of the planet. Okay. I wish I could go with you. You want to float through space? I'll make you a deal. When I come home, we'll float together. Really? Said you're going away. He says he's happy, but I can tell. You are just gonna take care of him while I'm gone, all right? Make sure he doesn't need ice cream. And that he smiles at least once a day. He really likes ice cream. I know. But it's not good for him to remind him. And if I'm not here, grab me more mind. Here. Mommy's gotta go, sweetie. Okay. Promise I'll come home. I promise. <laughs> Nothing's gonna stop me from coming home to you. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Seventy years we've been stuck with one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Where is the poetry in that? Why are you worried? You're not going to be the first one out the door anyway. Okay. So what are you gonna say? I'll think of something. 
Yeah, see, that's what I'm afraid of. Remember Yuri Gagarin, the first words a human ever spoke in space. He said, orbiting Earth in this spaceship, I saw how beautiful our planet is. People, let's preserve and increase its beauty, not destroy it. He also said, I looked and looked, but I didn't see God. Yeah, well, he was a godless communist. No offense. None taken. Actually, he was a Russian Orthodox, and he never said those words. That quote came from a speech Khrushchev made. Now he was a godless communist. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> joining us, here's what we know so far. At 2.57 p.m., the Samsara spacecraft, returning from its three-year Mars mission, suffered what NASA is calling a catastrophic event. The craft suffered an in-flight breakdown as it entered the atmosphere, leaving debris stretching across the reef states. NASA officials have confirmed that the accident was not survival. say anything about the accident. I hope it was a mistake. Some sort of a freak media shower, you know? And then, and then some Yahoo at a news desk panic, and then you went on the air. They just don't want us to know. She promised she'd come home. She said nothing on Earth could stop her from coming home. I stayed here for her. It hurt so much, but I stayed here. I know, honey, I know you can. Stop it. Take a deep breath, Amelia. Remember what the doctor said? Deep breath. I don't Deep. care what the doctor honey, said. Honey. I want mom. Amelia. Amelia.
god. Was it a missile? A meteorite? A goddamn lightning bolt from heaven? I need some answers right now. Yes, right now. Sir, you need to see this. Where'd you get this image? From the satellite feed. There's a satellite above the debris field? Blind it. We can't do that. Do it. Sky News is calling. Ignore it, I said. No one talks to the press. It's Google. No one talks to Google. Elvis, Dr. Price Johnson worked for them. No one talks to Google. No one talks to the families. No one talks to no one. This never happened. Are we clear? Are we clear? Yes, sir. Where are you? I need you in Nevada. Now. Good morning. You missed breakfast, but it didn't look very tasty. Poached egg and grits. Thirsty? My name is Wyatt Roberts. I work for the Director of National Intelligence. You've never heard of us. We're the guys who brief the president when there are incidents like yours. <laughs> incidents? I don't... Amnesia. Seriously. And that's your play. Why are you dressed like that? You're in quarantine. Do I have Ebola? We're not sure what's going on with you. Let's just say you're in quarantine until we can figure out why you're still alive. It's kind of a miracle. Elvis was looking for you. Uh, uh. You missed the morning news dump today. Oh. Let me guess. Terrorist attacks in London, world currency in free fall, <sighs> mass graves found in Mexico. Actually, it was terrorist attacks in Paris. 
It's the same every day. I don't even know why they go through the trouble. Amelia. She's alive. I don't know how, but she's alive. You know, there are all sorts of studies showing that people can stave off death when there's something they're willing to stay alive for. <gasps> she's waiting for me. I won't be long now. Oh, we're going home. We're going home. Yeah. We're going home. We're going home. <laughs> we're going home. <laughs> we're going home. Yes. What's the last thing you remember? I was in my daughter's room and I was looking at the stars. I have a daughter. You were looking at the stars. Out the window? Uh, on the walls. She has posters. My daughter, Amelia, she, she must be worried about me. I need to go see her. I have to go see her. You're not going anywhere. What? I told you. You're in quarantine. We have some more tests to run on you before you can be released. I need to see my little girl. And John. I need to see John. I need to see my husband and my little girl. And you will. Just as soon as we know it's safe. Is that why the door is locked? Is the door locked to keep me safe? No, Dr. Voss. It's locked to keep us safe. You want to run some tests, right? Let's do it. Where are my clothes? You don't have any clothes. We found you naked. You listen to me, you son of a bitch. The only thing that's kept my daughter alive these past three years is the thought of seeing her mother again. And this afternoon, she saw her blow up on television. I've got a dead wife and a kid in the hospital and the phone number of CNN science reporter on my speed dial. Now, if I don't get some answers pretty damn quick, I'm gonna start making some noise. Oh, national security. Don't pull that Homeland Security crap on me. If you don't have the clearance to give me some answers, you better find me somebody who does. We're going to be measuring the electrical activity of your brain using these electrodes. Yeah, I'm familiar with the EEG technology. Good. And this afternoon, we're going to be doing a PET scan and establishing baselines and compare what we get to the test NASA has on file. pleasure centers of my brain. We already know where they are. True. But there's nothing like, oh, primary research. Perfect. Okay, let's begin.
State your name. Dr. Catherine Boss. from the brain activity if she's faking amnesia? Huh. What? This is off the charts weird. Weird how? Weird as in impossible. What kind of questions were you asking her? We ran the scan three times with the same results. And? Every time she showed the same pattern of activity. It's like she has complete control of her subconscious mind. Then she's faking the amnesia. Faking? No. Post-traumatic amnesia is very common. But forget about the bizarre brain waves. Her blood work is what's really strange. We tested her blood and found 71 amino acids. 71? Can you just tell me what that means? Two weeks before she went to Mars, Catherine Boss had only 21 amino acids in her body. So? Well, I mean, Amino acids, they're, they don't, human beings only have 21. You're saying she's not human? Not anymore. Last sign. Star. Square. Star. Wavy lines. Star, 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 star. Star! But the sooner you get those oxygen generators online, the better. Mm -hmm. You know, I keep thinking if I look at those plants long enough, one of them is going to morph into a cigarette. You smoke? I'm French. Of course I smoke. <laughs> well, not for yours, but I still remember the taste. Maybe you can ask Robert to have his nanites whip up some cigarettes. Cigarettes, ah. Huh? And what would you ask him to whip up? Hmm? Mm hmm? Uh, chocolate. Chocolat. Mm, I like that. <laughs> I'm waiting for you. It hurts so much. Come to the greenhouse. Catherine is not well. Calm down. Calm down. Hello? 
Hello, Agent Roberts. How did you know it was me? Your, uh, scent is distinctive. You hesitated. You were gonna say something else. I was gonna say your aura, but I thought that might be too woo-woo for you. You're right. What does my aura look like? It's pink and sparkly, like a unicorn's. That's what I thought. You're not wearing your gear? Does that mean I'm not contagious? Well, I, I want to see my daughter. What lesson have you brought back to her? What, what did you learn that you couldn't have learned on Earth? I want to see my daughter. I'd like world peace, but it isn't going to happen today. You know what else isn't going to happen today? Me playing guinea pig. I want to see my daughter. Above my pay grade. Then get out! I'm not the only one with questions, Dr. Boss. And some of those people with questions, they're not as nice as I am. Well, are they the ones that blew the samsara? Who said it blew up? What do you remember? Everything was normal aboard the craft. Everyone was excited. Elvis? Elvis was taking selfies. And then we saw this streak of light coming right at us. I thought it was a UFO. It's not what I remember, Agent Roberts. It's what I'm learning now. You've kept me pretty sequestered. But I can hear the people talking. I can hear the fear in their voices. There weren't supposed to be survivors, were there? You thought you could claim catastrophic vehicle failure and all would be fine? But now the Chinese diplomats are demanding to know what really happened. I want to see my daughter. I'll make a call. You do that. Sir, we've got a problem. She remembers the vessel. That's unfortunate. We have the contingency covered. Activate you. Sir, are you oh, sure? You have such a good heart. Why? <laughs> but you have to remember that this. This woman is an abomination. The whole mission is an abomination, an act of global hubris. An insult to the creator. It's the whole dominion over this life, this earth. Nowhere is it written that we must spread our seed across this universe. Activate Shan or do it yourself. What the hell are you looking at? Good evening, Dr. Voss. Well, looks like we're in for a treat tonight. Chicken teriyaki and some rice. Well, I'm a vegetarian. Oh, darn. 
Well, looks like somebody screwed up the meal orders. What are you doing? It would have been a lot easier had you cooperated. What's in that needle? Just a little something to help with those memories. Oh, the missile. This is about the missile. Who shot that missile? Wrong question, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> Worshiping a false god. Why? You die! Because I am supposed to do something. It's not my time. into danger. Your husband, your daughters. They don't even know I'm alive, do they? No, they don't. And do you really want your little girl to know that her mommy went to Mars and came back a monster? Stay, and we can answer your questions together. I don't think so. Yes. John Voss? Wyatt Roberts. I got it. I want to see you warned. Call your lawyer if you want, but we're taking the laptop with us. I want a receipt. Of course. Bo? You wanna tell me why you're taking my computer? Because we have records of transmissions your wife sent to your daughter. 
that mention something strange and wonderful going on. Do you have any idea what that meant? Strange and wonderful? You mean the dreams? Dreams? What dreams? Kat told Amelia she was having these dreams. That she was swimming in a river of stars and galaxies. Is that code? Code? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> you think my wife was sending messages in code? What's going on here? How come no one will tell me what happened to the samsara? There's that one special report and then nothing. Special report? I don't know what you're talking about. You're lying. And you have been lying all along. I have. Yeah, you, the government, for all I know, the damn Illuminati. Someone has a vested interest in keeping the truth from us. If you're looking to technology to save your job, you're looking in the wrong direction. Why are Chinese suddenly rattling sabers? Why have our diplomats been expelled from Beijing? Why are pundits suddenly rethinking the whole space program? Because it's an obscene waste of money when people right here on Earth are going hungry. And children are dying of cancer. Get out of my house! Don't try to leave. Oh. Oh. Hey, girl. Hi. It's good to see good you. To see you. How are you doing? Doing fine. Good. Uh, yes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I know, right? Yeah, it's so good. Oh, and then. So this material is super, super soft, right? Very soft. She just took your stuff. It's just stuff. She obviously needed it more than I did. Should we order? <laughs> shouldn't be touching that with your bare hands. Afraid of some Martian virus? I'll take my chances. Ooh. <laughs> huh. 
Looks like something you could pick up in the Arizona desert. Like a little bit like home. Did you ever read William Blake in school? Sure. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. I never liked that one much. But auguries of innocence. To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand. An eternity in an hour. That's beautiful. My wife translated all of William Blake's work. You don't tell me you were married. My ex-wife? She was politically unreliable, and I wanted to go to Mars. And now here I am, quoting poetry by a 19th century English mystic. When I was a kid, my mother won a cruise to Australia for fall. It was one of those contests where you fill out a form and you forget about it because no one ever wins. Somebody has to win. Right? <laughs> my mom won. <laughs> it was a trip for four. So it was me, my parents, and my mother's best friend, Joy, who was always up for an adventure. And the first night we were at sea, I went out on the deck to look at the stars. Even then, I knew I wanted to be an astronaut. And I realized I didn't recognize any of the stars. I'd never been in the Southern Hemisphere before. I knew the constellations were different, but to look up at the sky and not recognize any of the stars was... Disorienting? More of a reminder that you can not see all sides of the universe looking at it from one perspective. And if we saw Earth from space, that would change everything. I wonder what Newton would have thought of this, you know, of, of us being here. Building a habitat on Mars as proof that humanity can live on another planet? He would have been first in line to buy a ticket. And he wouldn't have minded not coming back. You betcha. <laughs> you betcha. Yes, I do. Do you have any shoes? Oh, let me think. These look to be about your size. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can't pay you for anything. Did I ask you for money? Oh, I'm sorry. I... I... I'm just not good at being the one asking for help. I'm sorry. I just, I just feel out of control. <laughs> you think you're in control? The more tightly you hold on to things, the more they slip through you. It's like trying to stop time and hold off now. Oh, yeah. 
No. My name is Evangeline. Evangeline, like the oh. Thank you. You said that already. We are all in this together. And God knows none of us will make it out of here alive. Again, thanks everyone for sharing tonight. It's good. You look familiar. Have you been here before? No, that's my first time. Anything to share? Not tonight, just not ready. Well. Take your time. Thank you. Hang out. Enjoy the cake and coffee. Uh, the coffee's really good. Oh, really? The cakes are kind of stale. Chocorine caffeine. You've become some bad habits since you got back. Lucien. How are you feeling? I feel great. You relieved? I thought I'd become a monster. Because you survived. No, I can sense things. I can do things. I can do everything I want to do, except the thing I want to do the most. Mm. See Amelia again. You'll see Amelia again. Maybe not in your time frame, but in time. Sounds like something Cece would say. <laughs> I know I'll see Amelia again. I know it. And I know that's the reason why I'm still here. But why else? <laughs> why? Why is the most useless question in the universe? And yet it is the question we are born asking. And it's only answered when we die. So you know the answer? Now that you're dead? I know that we should not fear this. Ask for the rest. Your guess is as good as mine. Remember what we saw when we flew away from Earth. Remember how even Robert was moved to poetry. Yeah, and Elvis said that he felt like he overdosed on ecstasy. Yeah, well, Elvis... Uh... So if a spiritual experience can cause a cognitive shift, why can't it cause a physical evolution as well? Someone just took your picture. Go now. Lucien. I'm just not sure, man. Yeah, it remains to be seen. Target's been spotted headed west. West? She said it's her house. We'll get there first. Let's hit it! Come on, let's go! What are you waiting on? Let's hit it!
What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> Lost? Seems kind of silly how you can find your way home from Mars and then get lost in your own hometown. Lost. That's a good word to describe how I feel. I'm lost. You heard what they're saying about our mission. That it was all for nothing. That it cost a fortune and everybody died. Except I didn't. An inconvenient truth. You have to tell people why we went to Mars. People think that it was to find humanity a new home. It wasn't. What do you think? Well, I think, I think the real purpose was to look back at our world and see it. Really see it, you know? The home of all humanity. No borders, no barriers, just us. That's what I think. Exactly. And you can share that message. I can't preach to anyone. I'm not Jesus or Muhammad or Buddha. Or Neo. <laughs> but who's talking about preaching? I'm talking about showing, not telling. You already know what you can do. You've already felt it. We've come so far as a species, but sometimes we get lost. And every so often, someone special comes along to help us get back on our path. Someone who can see the bigger picture, that we're all one under the sun. That's kind of abstract. Not sure people would think a Hallmark card sentiment was worth a bazillion dollars that it took us to go to Mars and get us back. Well me back. Mm. But why me? I'm not special. Oh, come on. You don't believe that. I know how hard you work to put yourself through school. I know what you sacrificed to train for this mission. If you weren't special, you'd have quit a long time ago. But here's a question. What would humanity pay for peace? Peace of mind. No. Peace. As in the absence of aggression, the cessation of hostility, the end of conflict. Would that be worth the bazillion dollars it took to take us to Mars and bring you back? You know it would. You can reveal that all by yourself in one hour. What? You're not just dead, you're crazy. <sighs> one hour? Catherine, I'm a communications guy. Right? I know networks. Right now, humanity is one big mess of individuals acting as if they're the only ones on the planet, acting with no regard to how their actions affect other people. They're disconnected. You can change that. Well, well if I can, I can tap into this, this power. Can save a million, right? Right? I can't. I can. I can save humanity, but I can't save my little girl. Who made that rule? You have to let go of your anger. Well, I am. I have a right to my anger. You know, I am angry because my little girl is dying, and I want. 71 amino acids fizzing in my body, and I can mind meld 7 billion people, but I can't save my little girl? No! No! Amelia's already made her choice. Now you have to choose. 
What's it gonna be? It's too hard. When has anything ever been too hard for you? I'm on the way to the hospital to grieve with my dying daughter over the death of her mother. So I suggest you get the hell out of here. Mr. Voss, I understand how you must feel. I don't think you do. Your family's in danger. I need you to go back inside until we assess the situation. No. Sir, I must insist. Hey. I survived the Battle of Fallujah. You think you can stop me from seeing my dying daughter? Not on your best day. Sir, what do you want us to do? Stay here and wait for the wife. And if she comes back, take her into custody. I'll be back at the hospital. OK. Agent Pope. I believe you've been looking for me. I am. I'm Catherine Voss. How do you know my name? I honestly don't know. So what? Is that where your new abilities? Your psychic? I guess so. Don't be scared. I need a ride to the hospital to see my little girl. I'm not going to hurt you. You don't want to kill me, Eli. You're not angry at me. You're mad because your wife wants a divorce and you don't. You think she's sleeping with your neighbor, but she isn't. And you love her so much, you're afraid to tell her how angry you are because then she might never speak to you again. So you're angry at me. But I forgive you. Will you forgive me? I forgive you. We need to go now, Eli. There's something I need to do, and I don't have much time. You know, the reason why you can't remember what happened on Mars is because what happened didn't happen on Mars. It happened on the way there. I was wondering when you were going to show up. Time is a river. What did I see? What did I see that caused all this? You've already remembered. I don't know what you're talking about. 
We were talking about what we were going to say when we stepped out on Mars for the very first time. And you quoted Yuri Gagarin. The Earth is so beautiful. Yeah. The planet is so beautiful. We saw the Earth. Out the starboard window. It is so beautiful. So blue. So peaceful. And you thought? And I thought... We are all one on this small blue planet. There are no boundaries. There are no nations. It's just us. Under the sun. I am no astrophysicist like some people I know. But I once heard someone say that the unifying principle in all the universe, the glue that puts it all together, is love. Love makes the world go round? Time is running out, Catherine. A lunatic named Crichton boy has claimed responsibility for the explosion on the samsara. And has admitted killing the Chinese president three years ago. Why? He left a manifesto. I did my thesis on the manifesto of madmen, and it never really matters why they do things. Left. Start up a hornet's nest and then disappeared to avoid getting stung. The PRC has nukes, Catherine. Go away. You're a figment of my imagination. Go. Albert Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. I know. I used to have a t-shirt with that quote printed on it. A world without war. You can make it happen. But if you wait, you will be too late. I am a figment of my own imagination. A ghost walking aimlessly amongst the living. How can I save the world? I can't even save my daughter. Our greatest fear is not that we are powerless, but that we are powerful among measure. You sound like a fortune cookie. You're deflecting. You know what you have to do. You know why you're giving this task and the power to complete it. Power. Power has only led me to pain. This universe has made a mistake. There are no mistakes. Only remind us. It's easy to give up, to fall into despair. It is only when we endure do we find it in ourselves to achieve great. But I'm all alone. Huh. I have no one left. You are not alone. John. Oh, my God. John? You guys don't have that much time. Roberts will be back. see you again. They told me you were dead. Well, they told me that it wasn't safe for me to be with you, that I'd contaminate you or infect you. And we saw the samsara blow up. We saw it on TV, and, and then a NASA official said there were no survivors. And then they pulled every scrap of footage off their hair. They said that, that it, it never happened, that it, it was a mistake, that we must have imagined it. I didn't want to believe it, but we saw it blow up. We saw it. John, there's something I have to do. That's the reason I survived. 
this accident. If you were here, there has to be a reason. I know you're part of something bigger than my own understanding. I missed you. I missed you. Every hour you were gone. But if you hadn't gone, you wouldn't have been the woman I, I fell in love with. The woman I love. John. <laughs> I'm not strong. I'm not strong at all. When Amelia got sick, I felt like my whole world was falling apart. I felt so selfish for leaving, but I just couldn't sit here and watch her die. So I ran. And I ran all the way to Mars. I cannot forgive myself for that. But I forgive you, Catherine. And Amelia forgives you. You need to forgive yourself. Why'd you have to survive? If you just died, everything would have been fine. But no. You had to give the people a miracle so they keep putting their faith in technology. We don't have to save ourselves. Science will save us. We don't have to clean up our oceans because we could just move on to another planet. You survived. And that was a miracle. Well, I don't believe in miracles. Look at me when I'm talking to you! I'm sorry. Were you having a moment there? <laughs> Yes, beautiful. It's me. I came home from Mars. And 
Jujur. I promise, didn't I? I had a dream. It took me to a river of stars. And we dived in and swam. And there was galaxies floating past us like rainbow fish. And we caught them. And petted them. And then we threw them back. in the middle of a cloud of stars. It was so beautiful. You were so beautiful. Are you crying? Why are you crying? Oh, sometimes you see something so precious, you just want to hold on to it for as long as you can. Is she in there? Yes, Dr. Boss is inside. She what? Just showed up here and waltzed in? She wanted to speak to her daughter. I found John Boss in her room. Do you have something to do with that? There's a reason she's alive, sir. She got to you. What if she's not crazy? What if we're the crazy ones? What if... What if what we're doing is wrong? You're in my way. I don't want to hurt you, sir. Shame. I can't say the same about you. What, baby? What do you wish? I heard the nurses talking. Yeah? They're scared there's gonna be a war because of the Chinese astronaut Berta. So, I wish there not to be a war. I wish that tomorrow everyone wake up and be happy and not be mad anymore. Yeah. But what about getting well? Wouldn't you wish for that? No. I think you only get one wish. Yeah? Then you'll give up your wish for everybody else? I give my life for them. Yeah? Isn't that what you're doing?